All right, everyone, welcome back to A Trade A Day, this new series that I'm doing where I'm kind of breaking down one idea I have for tomorrow at the end of each day. As always, sometimes I'll do a video, sometimes I won't. Make sure you're at the email list. Go to Stats at Trading, sign up for the email list there. I always am going to email something out, even just a paragraph and a couple charts for what I'm looking at. And obviously not investment advice. A lot of these won't trigger as people are, are learning. I don't think I've really had many of these triggers so far, but this is just how I think about trading. I want to develop a plan the night before. I want to put out all my orders and then let the trade work after I've planned it. Could trigger, could not, who knows. So I've been talking quite publicly on a lot of places about this potential rotation. So I want you to take a look here at the spy chart and what may be happening here on the spy chart is this kind of pullback that we've had a couple days. But if we take a look at something like RSP, RSP is actually still doing well. And what's this telling us? This is telling us that the S&P 500, which is cap weighted, which is more weighted to those large names, is underperforming the equal weight, which is just kind of spread out, showing that there's a lot of things in the market that are, are holding the market up, even though some of the big cap names are selling off. For us stock pickers, that's great. For people who only trade NVIDIA and Microsoft and all that, they're going to have a bad time, but that's not me, so I don't care. So looking at some of the things that are actually doing well today, uh, XRT is very interesting. The retail ETF gap down, ran all day, closed a little bit over yesterday's high, but a nice solid day here and a nice tight range. And this is considering that GameStop that has a pretty big weighting in it is continuing to sell off and break down and, you know, just being the what GameStop does. So when I was looking through this, I was trying to figure out what I may want to take a look at uh, going forward when it came to these different names. And I wanted to bring up Nordstrom's or JWN here. This is because mainly this showed up on one of my scans because of the 16% short float on Nordstrom's. And right here we have the 50 day moving average. Now there's no power to any moving averages, but a lot of traders I respect use the 50 day as, as a good guide to say, this name is strong or this name is weak. And we're kind of consolidating under this important level right here, about $22 or so a share. So I am looking for Nordstrom's to get above 22 bucks a share. And that's where I'm going to look to get involved. Absolute worst case stop would be low this candles low right here or below the 50 day moving average. But for me, this is just a way to potentially get involved in this rotation by buying a sector that looks pretty strong and something that has a pretty decent short float as well with Nordstrom's or JWN. So that's my breakdown of a trade. Fairly simple, but again, process from idea generation to, you know, which is the sector that I'm interested in, to taking a look at the different stocks, to coming up with a plan, to now setting my alert and my order, and then letting the market either get me or not. If we gap down 10% tomorrow, I'm not in. Uh, if we break 22 and then stop out, oh well, I've accepted the loss. If we break 22 and this ends up being a push to 30 or so, then again, I'm a very happy camper. So that's the way I'm thinking about this trade. As always, make sure you're going over to statsetrain.com. Sign up for the email list so you never miss one of these and I'll talk to you soon.